walk me through your opinion of Brock Purdy. Well, I don't understand any of the criticism, Rich. I really don't. I, I think the guy's just a silent assassin. Um, he's he's so relaxed and he's so confident, yet he doesn't really relish any of the spotlight. I mean, he'll tell you, I'm just good at playing quarterback, but I'm a regular guy. The players love him, Rich. They, I remember his first game was last year. He came in for Garoppolo. He got hurt against the Dolphins. And he, he he played pretty good in that game. And his first start was the following week against Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. And I remember um, talking to him and Debo and uh, Kittle and the whole group. And they were like, Baldy, this kid, we knew he was good in training camp when he was carving us up as just a, the scout team quarterback. Um, that guy sees the field as good as anybody in this whole business. His runs, he was channeling Steve Young the other day. I don't think we knew that he could do that in that stage against that defense with that speed that they have. And his movement is just elite. And then the probably the best part about him is he plays with no fear. Yeah, he threw an interception in the first quarter. It kind of, you know, stopped a drive that they had going. It, it never sits in his mind that he, he's going to play with less fear after that. And so I think he's the perfect quarterback for Kyle right now in that he can program him. This is what I want. He can coach him hard. If he makes a mistake, he can get on him like he does during a week in practice. Yet he can take all of that and still go play um, without any sort of fear about making a mistake. So the mistakes he makes are because of, of why. Um, and, and I set that up by asking – because if you're going against Mahomes, you can't have somebody who's still growing in the position. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you got to show no, up no. as a grown ass man. So, um, and, and if he is, by the way, that's totally understandable. I mean, and you well, as an uh, you as an undrafted player would completely understand somebody who almost was undrafted, and 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 how that can you know maybe affect the way you do something and you put a chip on a shoulder and what have you. But wh yeah, why, why, you know, you, why why is he making the mistakes he's making right now? Well, because. Right? The offense is designed to attack the middle of the field. And there's just a lot of traffic in the middle of the field. You know, Josh Paschal tips his hand and he's throwing, trying to throw the ball in the middle of the field. It gets intercepted by Malcolm Rodriguez the other day. There's a lot of traffic. And he's layering these throws over the linebackers in front of the safeties. But yet he's hitting Debo in stride. And so that's where this, that's where Kyle likes to design the offense. Garoppolo was good at it at times. Obviously, he wasn't good at times. But it's not safe throws. He's not throwing checkdowns to running backs. He's not throwing like Tom Brady um, deep down the field. Like, he's not throwing deep down the field outside the numbers. It's in the middle of the field. And so those are those are throws that can get a lot of quarterbacks in trouble. Um, Brady could throw the ball to a running back 14 times in the Super Bowl. He'd be happy as hell. Well, they're they're not doing that. Um, that's not the way the, the offense is designed. They're designed to attack with chunk plays the way Mike March did back in the day with Kurt, and that's where they want to go. And not everybody is built to make those throws. So the scheme is built for dangerous throws. Like there's it a lot built but, for but, dangerous. So there's the risk, and then we could see obviously the reward. And yes. that's what you're saying. With I, I, I'm I'm saying exactly that. And so a lot of it is off play action, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. um, but you watch their in cuts. Like I remember talking to Jim Schwartz after they lost to Cleveland mm -hmm. uh, this year. And I, I, I talked to Jim about it and he said, you know, like we knew that they loved their in cuts, but we weren't, we weren't getting out of our man to man coverage. We're going to stay, we're going to make the quarterback beat us. And that day he threw an interception. Uh, Martin Emerson picked one off and they, they shut him down pretty good that day. They play without Debo. They play without Trent Williams. But nonetheless, uh, they manned those receivers up, and they didn't have the big open spots in the middle of the field. They, they played really well. They took them away. But that's when I started. But Jim was like, this is where they want to go, Baldy. We knew it. And we could have played zone and protected ourselves, but we're like, the corners wanted to play man and man up against Ayuk and Kittle, and we were good with it, Juwan Jennings. And they won that day. And it remains to be seen what Spags is going to do as much man coverage as he played the other day and as much talent as he has at the cornerback position if he's going to play that style. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.